Welcome back, my friends. Today, we gotta get back at it. The beautiful female geniculata is roaming around. I'm absolutely loving doing these enclosures, getting all these animals from their smaller enclosures when it's time, they need time to move up, getting them into these beautiful nature-inspired enclosures. Absolutely love doing it. And today's no exception. And I probably, you guys probably saw the video of some of the pickups I brought home from the Reptile Expo Plant Expo in Toronto a week or so ago. Well, this beautiful girl needs a permanent home. And I think she's going to get a nice, beautiful, nature-inspired home as well. This is Leniathel phallax. And she's known as, I've incorrectly called it, a funnel web spider. And that is 100% incorrect. It's a tunnel web spider or a curtain web spider. And they form these incredible tunnels throughout their enclosures. Now, this enclosure, this particular female, did all of this webbing in three days as she was put into this closure to get ready to go to the, to the expo from Tarantula Canada. Now, this is a species that hails from Brazil and Bolivia, so it's going to require higher humidity, good air quality, so good air movement, but it's also an incredible webber, very similar to our beautiful uh, green bottle blue, the Chromatopelma. Now, so this one, because it's a heavy, such a heavy Weber, we're not going to go and make anything too, too fancy with mosses and, and all that sort of stuff. The cool part is what this animal is going to do with its enclosure. So let's get to it. All right, we've got our enclosure ready to go. This is one of the repurposed enclosures. This is actually the enclosure that the Green Bottle Blue was in. It's all been cleaned out, washed out, ready to go. I've got my proprietary substrate mix. I've got some uh, clay balls, different things that we're going to use for the substrate. We've got some hides. So let's get right to it. Now, the first thing I'm going to add is the clay balls. It's going to be noisy for a second. Now, you guys have seen me use these expanded clay pellets before, and generally the purpose behind them is meaning that I'm going to be generally using it as a bioactive. However, this species, I'm not going to be doing it as bioactive, but the reason their purpose are for me behind putting those balls in place is that it'll allow me to have a moisture sink below the substrate. And by doing so, that will increase the humidity within the enclosure for the animal. So the next step is, is we're going to be adding our substrate mix. As always, I, I use my proprietary mix I use for almost everything. It's very moisture retentive, which is exactly what we're going to want for this. I want to get it as, uh, as deep as I can in the front, mainly just for a moisture sink. That's not really much of a burr. It's not really a fossorial species. But I want to make it as high as I can without uh, disturbing the, the cross ventilation that is built into the front of these units. I also have a, uh, a cork hide ready to go that we'll probably go and put in place somewhere in here. But it's very, very doubtful that this animal will use it. But as the enclosure is brand new, granted she built her, uh, her shelter last time in three days. But as this enclosure is pretty much brand new, I want to make certain that... Uh, she has a place where she can get away should she choose. So we're going to just bury it down like that. And then she's got to hide should she want it. My ventilation is good. My cross ventilation, which comes in from the front of the enclosure, is good. And we're good. Now this is where the fun part comes in. Is because she's such an incredible Weber, I want to give her a lot of structure to support her webs. So I'm going to go be using some natural branches that I've harvested outside. See if I got my snips and we can cut them down. They're just all sorts of different types of branches, but I want to give them a little bit of cleanup to make sure that they work for what we want to do. So we want them to fit. We want them to give us the structure that we want. That'll give her anchoring point. So we need to trim that down a little bit more. So that one's good. Come in here and trim that. That looks nice. It's not really overly visually appealing to me having just all these sticks in here, but this definitely meets the requirements or the needs of the animal better, which is exactly the reason we should be doing these nature-inspired enclosures, is making sure that we are meeting the needs of the animals first and foremost. So 
maybe burying those into the substrate a little bit will give me a better sense of what it looks like. That looks a little better. It didn't look as kind of planned. And I think that is an absolute ton of, subs of uh, material to give her anchor points for her web. And honestly, it might actually be too much for it. But we always want to make sure we give the animal a, a water dish. Now, with this type of species, that's more than likely going to create these big webs. Uh, this water dish might very well get buried. But uh, we always want to make sure that we're providing it for the animals, making sure it's always readily available. Push it right there into the substrate. And overall, I think I might just add a few little botanicals, more for visual interest for myself. And otherwise, I think we're good. To me, these just, they're just kind of the icing on the cake. <laughs> You would always find these things in nature and it kind of makes it look a, a little bit more natural to me, I guess. Granted, the animal may very well move them around to their own, her liking. Now we're almost ready to move her over. Now I just want to fill up the water dish and I want to overfill the water dish a fair bit so we can build up that bit of that water sink, that reservoir below the substrate that will provide the humidity. Now I use reverse osmosis water because I manufacture water for, for everything else, for, my, for all my animals. Uh, so I always have it available. Uh, either that or rainwater or steam distilled water or something like that. That way I'm not gonna have any of that heavy mineral content. Uh, that'll calcify and leave all those ugly stains. So I think we're almost ready to go. Let's go get her. Let's get our catch cup and our brushes, and let's move her over. All right, by moving the camera back, one, not only can you see the incredible clutter that is my, my work desk right now, but you can see that we have the clay beads, and there's a bit of a water line there. That's water below the, below the substrate. We have the substrate all the way up to here. This is the cross ventilation, and then the top ventilation. So it's now it's time to get it over. The only problem being with moving her over, because she has, as I mentioned, a tunnel web or a curtain web spider, is she's built this incredible labyrinth and everything is attached to the roof or to the lid. So this is gonna be rather challenging to move her over. All right, so what I did is I actually put the container on the ground and I used the back end of my paintbrush and I slowly teased off all her webbing off the roof. As I mentioned, she did this all in three days time. And you can see she is decidedly not happy whatsoever. This is a rather uh, highly venomous species. So I definitely do not want to be tagged by her, but we want to be able to move her over as calmly as we can. So hopefully she will just want to go and find her new home. Yeah, you think you want to go in there? I don't want to tip all the substrate. Oh, that was pretty quick. They're a very speedy species, as you can tell. I don't even know where she went. I see her. She's up on that back wall. So before we have any issues, we're going to go and click her lid into place. So here's a full look at her, her habitat right now. And I guarantee you within a couple of days, <laughs> it won't look anything like this whatsoever. But there she is at the back. Just kind of relaxing. Well, they are truly a beautiful spider. You can even see she's got silk hanging from her. And now my goal is just to let her relax, de-stress, and start making this her home. And there she is out exploring her new habitat. Looking absolutely gorgeous. In the container, she just looked black. Make sure all the sticks don't come flocked. There we go. You can see I've already got some silk from her. Now let's see if she does the same thing as uh, what the beautiful Chromatopelma does. That's all for today. Thank you kindly for watching, my friends. But tell me what you think about the, her, her new setup. 
leave me a little comment and we can check back on her in maybe a month's time and see what kind of magic she's done for us.